and I think it also ties into what Ken Dorsey said um, in his presser today. You know, so he was asked about the personnel groupings, and Ken Dorsey said, we're trying to maximize all of our personnel groupings and not rely on any one guy. We're trying to figure out what guys do best. That also ties into what Sean McDermott said yesterday was saying that, you know, the team needs to develop an identity. Where the Bills are right now, the stage that they're at, again, we're four days into training camp. They're trying to find out who they are as a team, philosophically and systematically, based on identifying their strengths and how they're going to ebb and flow. And granted, as the season progresses, they'll formulate that identity further and really cement it. But right now, they're trying to maximize everything. They are trying out everything, which is why you're seeing different formations. You're seeing different alignments. You're seeing Khalil Shakir on the outside as more of an X receiver, even though he's you know traditionally a slot guy. You saw that from Jameson Crowder as well. You're seeing Reggie Gilliam in that movement role and in an H-back role and a variety of personnel packages. That's why Dawson Knox is saying, man, we've run more 13 personnel than we have you know the first two years and all these types of stuff. The Bills right now are trying to develop their identity and figure out who they are going into the season and potentially, by extension, who they are as the season progresses. And exactly like Ken Dorsey said, they're trying to maximize all of their personnel groupings and trying to figure out what guys do best. So a lot of it is trial and error and experimentation. Like, okay, how do we feel in these two tight end looks? Okay, how do we feel if... OJ Howard is the Y and Dawson Knox, you know, gets split out. How do we feel if those roles are reversed? How does it look if James Cook and Devin Singletary are both on the field at the same time? How, what, how does it feel if Cook is in the slot or if McKenzie's in the backfield? Trial and error, experimentation, figuring out what you can do, what your players can do, how to best utilize their strengths and minimize their weaknesses. So part of it in those personnel packages and those alignments and what they mean First and foremost, it's, it's again, trying to maximize your personnel groupings, maximizing your player strengths. I don't think necessarily because the Bills have shown a lot of heavy personnel early in training camp, that means, oh, okay, this is what they're going to be. We're going to see a ton of O.J. Howard and a ton of Dawson Knox and a ton of Reggie Gilliam. I don't think that. Still right now, my thoughts are it's going to be a week-to-week thing. I think I'm just making this up for an example. Week one, you could see a ton of 12 personnel. Week two, you might barely see any. Week one, you might see a ton of Reggie Gilliam, and maybe you don't see him again until week four. Or maybe you don't see any. Maybe Reggie Gilliam is inactive for week one, and then he's a focal point of the offense in week two, three, and four. I think the the game plan every week for the offense is going to be very matchup dependent. Ken Dorsey has talked about wanting to attack his opponents in a variety of ways, and doing that is – going after their weaknesses. You want to spam those attacks that you know your opponent struggles against. That's what, that's really what being a great team is. Like you want to have your strengths and you want to play your strengths. And it's good to know like, okay, you know, at the end of the day, I know we can do a, and we're great at it and we're going to be fine, but it's nice to be able to throw again. This is one of my favorite themes of this off season, rock, paper, scissors. It's fine. If you're just great at throwing rock and you can potentially win by throwing rock, but What happens if your opponent throws rock? You want to be able to throw paper. If they throw scissors, cool. Smash it. You're fine. You're good to go. Also, what happens if they throw paper and paper covers rock? You got to be able to pivot and be like, cool, let me pull out scissors. And that way you can win. The Bills are trying right now to establish multiplicity and variability in their offense with personnel packages, alignments, and the players that they're using in those packages and in those alignments. What I think you're seeing now isn't necessarily a firm stamp on any one package or grouping. What you're seeing right now is the experimentation. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at my notes, but I just saw this pop up from Ron say rock, paper, scissors, let's have go. Well done, well done. What I think you're seeing now is, oh, and I know comments have been coming through in the chat. You guys know, I'm going to cycle back and get at them. But what you're seeing now is the experimentation and the trial and error to develop that baseline of comfortability to figure out who you are and know what you have in your groups and in your players going forward. That's what this is all about right now. You are establishing those baselines. Who teams are right now? I was going to say nobody, but I don't deal in absolutes, even though I am a Sith. I do consider myself a Sith or a heel, but no team. Who they are right now is not who any team is going to be towards the end of the year. As the season progresses, you find out who you are. You you get that firm stamp. You cement your identity, and you really get new rhythm and figure out who you are as a team. 
But what's important right now is establishing and setting those baselines, setting that floor so that way you have a foundation from which you can operate, work from, and then go forward. That's why we're seeing all this mixing and matching. I don't think the Bills really, even though the Bills have some different personnel in their wide receiver room, the Bills don't really need to go into 11 and 10 personnel a ton because that's kind of old hat to them. The Bills don't need to see three wide receiver sets with Stephon Diggs and Gabriel Davis and Isaiah McKenzie. Like, that's old hat. What they do need to see is, okay, how does it feel with Howard and Knox? Okay, how can we use both of them? How does it look with both of those guys and Reggie Gilliam? How does it look with Singletary and Cook? How does it look if we put Crowder over here or Shakir over here or if we take our traditional slot-wide receivers and, again, use them on the outside as an X? What happens if we line them out there and we keep them static from the moment they line up out there versus if we put them somewhere and then use them in short motion or use them in, or, or use them in cross motion and bring them across the field? One of the other things I mentioned, too, we saw – Khalil Shakir functioning in a little bit of that Cooper Cup role that you see in Los Angeles a lot where he's hipped off of that tight end and he steps inside and kind of folds a little bit and leads a running back between the tackle and the tight end, picks up a second level defender and is kind of like a lead blocker coming through the hole. We saw Khalil Shakir do that, granted without pads. We saw him do that on day one. That's what you're going to see with this team right now, especially on the offensive side of the ball, especially with a new first time offensive coordinator and a new quarterbacks coach and a new offensive line coach, this side of the ball is figuring out their identity. The defense, they know who they are. They know what coverages they're playing. They know how to communicate one another. The whole defense basically ran it back. You have Kyrie Elam and you've got Von Miller and some new guys up front, but that's easier to kind of build given the core that's already established and the continuity and the coaching staff on the defensive side of the ball. The offense Again, tying it back to what Ken Dorsey said, I'm going to keep reiterating it. Ken Dorsey said, we're trying to maximize all of our personnel groupings and not rely on any one guy. We're trying to figure out what guys do best. And that ties into with what Sean McDermott said the other day, saying that we need to find an identity. What this part of training camp is about for the offense right now is finding out who they are philosophically and systematically based on their strengths and based on how they can function and flow how they fit, again, into that rock, paper, scissors offense. That's what they want to be. That's what Ken Dorsey wants to be. Ken Dorsey wants to have a pivot. He wants multiple tools in his toolbox. He wants, you know, multiple weapons in the arsenal, bullets in the chamber, gun in the holster, whatever you want to go with. He wants to be able to pivot and know, like, okay, is this week going to be a vertical passing game? Okay, is this week going to be quick game? Is this week going to be more RPO? Is this week going to be zone run? Is this week going to be read option? Is this week going to be gap run? They, he wants to be able to maximize all of that and know, again, if he has to use one of those and maximize one of those, he knows what the baseline is and what the potential ceiling is for each of those personnel packages, each of those players in those situations. And Tying it into something else Ken Dorsey said today is he wants a fast, physical, disciplined offense. Things like lowering pad level, run after catch, splitting defenders, and maximizing yardage on every touch. He said he wants the players to be fast with speed. He wants them to finish runs. He wants to get his players, he wants to get the ball in their hands and have them be explosive and making plays with the ball in their hands. Again, lowering pads, splitting defenders, trying to get that extra yard or two, and then being disciplined with assignments and being in the right spots. He wants a fast, physical, disciplined offense. Maybe this leads to some more yards after the catch. I thought that was very interesting that he you know, was asked specifically about that, mentioned that they had spoken about it this offseason and in the beginning of camp, and mentioned, you know, again, words like those buzzwords, mentioning you know, being explosive and making plays with the, balls, with the ball in our hands. That was something I didn't, I didn't think we saw a lot last year. And that's something I kind of want to mention real quick. We have a lot of, there are a lot of takes on the lack of run after catch or yards after catch, whatever verbiage you're going with. There wasn't really an opportunity for a lot of that last year. You know, Cole Beasley is the prototypical example of it. A lot of people like to knock Cole Beasley for his, you know, yards after catch and be like, Oh, he couldn't make plays after the catch. He wasn't really set up for that. The bills offense wasn't designed for that. If you're running a seven yard hitch and you're finding, you know, space, in the defense and leveraging that space and you make that catch, there's a good chance you're surrounded by a minimum of two defenders. And so you're just catching the ball, turning defenders are descending down upon you. And you're just like, all right, cool. Boom. You get hit, you go down. This offense last year didn't really lend itself to run after the catch. Then you add in things like ball placement from Josh Allen and throws and the execution piece. And that's when things kind of snowball a little bit. Maybe that's why you don't see that. Maybe you get more of a concerted effort from Ken Dorsey in there. I I wanted to mention that because I know it's a big concern 
for people to run after catch. It's not necessarily for me. I'm cool with it if it happens, but I don't think that's a piece where I'm sitting here going, the Bills need more run after catch. You know, they need a Debo Samuel type role in this offense. I don't necessarily think that's true, Um, but I wanted to mention that as well. But again, you're seeing these packages and all these alignments, these personnel groupings and how these players are being used. I think this is Ken Dorsey starting to put his stamp and his fingerprints on this offense because he wants to be multiple. He wants to be varied. He wants to play rock, paper, scissors. He wants to attack his opponent in the best way he can to maximize, you know, his team strengths and expose and work at his opponent's weaknesses. And in order to do that, you got to figure out everything you have. You got to be able to open that drawer, see everything you have in front of you and figure out, okay, like, what can I do with that? What can I do with that? How strong is that? How weak is that? Okay, I know all these things. And then you can figure out come regular season and come week to week matchups and opponents, you can figure out what dial to turn up, what dial to turn down, when to turn them up, when to turn them down. And you are a complete master of your domain in every sense, in every sense of the word. And I think that's what you're seeing right now with all these packages, alignments, and what they mean. I don't think it necessarily means guaranteed you're going to see heavy personnel a ton. You're going to see a ton of two tight end sets. You're going to see a ton of Reggie Gilliam. I don't necessarily think that's true for every given week. Again, I think it's going to be matchups dictating what the Bills do offensively on a week-to-week basis, what dials they turn up, what dials they turn down. And right now, again, in order to be able to turn all – you want to be able to play with all the dials. If you've got 10 dials in front of you, you want to be able to turn and lower all 10. You don't want to be able to just turn and lower two or five or six or seven. You want to maximize everything. That's what Ken Dorsey is doing right now with this offense, throwing all these personnel groupings, mixing and matching different players, experimenting with them in different alignments and in different roles, figuring out what he's got in order to put it all together.